Okay, by this point you should have watched the video that goes over the basic layout of Trello and how we'll be using it with the student newspaper. Um, that video covered the, uh, the login screen, what you see once you log in, and how to navigate to our groups page as well as the deadline boards for each month. Um, it also explained kind of the workflow and what these different columns are at the top, how you go from you know the beginning when you choose a story to this published final draft column at the end. So if you haven't watched that film yet, make sure you do go back and take a look at that one um, because that one is the most important video um, in order for us to use Trello effectively as a staff. This video is going to go over um, the cards specifically, which are these little white boxes over here on the left. Um, these are the pieces that can be dragged, uh, can be dragged to different columns to show where you are with your story or with the project or deadline you're work currently working on. Um, you can create your own cards, and you should. Every time you're ready to start a new story, you'll hit this Add Card button. And you can see the pattern we've kind of followed. We would like you to name the cards with your name, first and last name, um, as well as what your story is about. The example I've been using is FAFSA um, because that deadline's coming up and it's a really relevant story. Once you type your name and what your story is about, you can hit enter and it will create a new card for you. At that point, you want to go in and you want to edit the card. You can see um, the other cards up here that are fairly complete, as well as the example I've created. They have some little symbols down on the bottom, as well as some color coding. And those are important to indicating to other staff members, to editors, as well as to us advisors, um, who's in charge of the story, when your deadline is, and what the story is about. So in order to edit that, all you have to do is click on the card that you've created and it will bring it up in a separate window. You're going to have um, some blank pieces right here initially and a bar down the right side um, with various menu options. So what each of these does, um, the members button will enable you to assign the story to yourself or to other students um, if that's the case. So I could assign the story to me and it's going to put my initials in a little box um, here as well as on the card in the column. So that's really helpful uh, for a quick overview to see who is working on what in addition to having your name attached to the card as well. So that one is definitely a must once you've created a new card for a new story. Uh, we'll go right on down the line here and you should go through at least these top four when you've first created a story. The Labels button will uh, bring up this list of color-coded labels and you're going to have to choose which one fits best depending on what section the, of the paper it's going to go in. We have kind of our four main sections, the news, the feature, sports, and then kind of an, a general announcements section, which these could also fit under news as well. Um, you may have some stories that fit under multiple categories, which is fine. Mark all the ones you think are appropriate. Um, the categories that should never be marked together would be the news category and feature, because those are totally different categories, um, as well as the, the um, opinion label, which I don't see. Oh, show more labels. So we have quite a few more. Um, opinion and news should never go together. Opinion and feature should never, to go, never go together. Um, a lot of the ones that you're going to see overlap would be, um, you may have a multimedia story, so audio, video, photography story um, that fits in feature. It could also be about science. Um, so we would be able to clip, click multiple tags here. In the case of the FAFSA story that I'm currently looking at, I would actually choose news um, as well as guidance department. Um, I could pick ETA news, I could pick community news because it's relevant to parents, and I could also pick announcements. Um, so this story fits in multiple categories, which is perfectly fine. 
when it gets posted to WordPress, um, you want to choose all those categories because a parent may only be looking at the announcements, whereas you may have a student who only looks at the news or the guidance department. So giving them multiple paths to find that story is important. The cool thing about the color coding, if I close out of my card here for a second, is it gives us kind of an overview of what we have. So right now for February, we have quite a bit of feature. Um, we only have one opinion piece. And we only have two sports pieces that are currently assigned to somebody. We have a couple sports options here, um, but right now nobody has picked those up and said, yes, I'm going to work on those. Um, you can also see a couple here who aren't, a couple tag, uh, cards here that aren't color coded yet. So this one really needs to, um, Kristen needs to go in and kind of edit the particulars of that story. So you can see the changes I've made to mine so far. I've got my colored labels and I've got my initials on it. But we need to open it back up and there's still some things we need to do. Um, the description is really important because if, if Mr. Stanzak and I can't tell what your story is about just from the title, um, we may have to ask you some clarifying questions and adding a description is going to help with that. Um, my title is really basic here. I could do a ton of different stories on the FAFSA deadline. I could talk to a graduated senior about their experience with FAFSA and how it helped them or hurt them. Um, I could do a question and answer with Mrs. Waugh. I could do a survey about the number of seniors who plan on filling out FAFSA. I could look up statistics on how many seniors in our district, in our state, um, fill out the FAFSA and just give some general information. I could talk to some, um, talk to Mrs. Waugh and talk to some people at the state level with the state of Indiana for some suggestions and some tips on how to complete the FAFSA form. So there are a lot of different options. Um, I think one of the best ways to do this is to go through and fill out the basics. Who, what, when, where, why, how. So who, guidance, seniors, Mrs. Waugh. Um, what, college funding, financial aid, major deadline, this one's really important. Uh, maybe I'm giving them tips and tricks for meeting the deadline. And I'm also going to talk about the workshops. So my when is going to be workshop date as well as final deadline for FAFSA, which I don't know. So I'm going to put that as a question right now, kind of as a need to know. Um, I'm going to put where the workshop is located. I could put the website link. I could put Mrs. Waugh's contact info. Um, why helps seniors with college aid. So you can see how this helps really make the story a little bit more specific. I know as an advisor where you're going as a reporter. So once you've typed that up, you can hit save. Um, and we'll move back over here to the right side. So once you, you've kind of thought about what specifically is my story about, you can start creating a checklist, and I love this function. So if you hit checklist, you can call it what you want. I just leave it called checklist. Um, if you like someone else's checklist, you can copy it from theirs. Here's one I made earlier, so maybe I'll copy that to do so you can see. Um, what that does is in the middle of your card it gives you a checklist and I love it has a tracking bar that tells you where you're at. So these are the things that I might need to do in order to complete this story. And as I do them, I can check them off and it kind of, this is more for personal use, what you need to do and to help hold you accountable. Um, I can add items, Mr. Stanzak can add items to the card. I believe other staff members can as well. So if someone has a suggestion for something you should do, they can add it to your list. The last item on the right side that you really need to pay attention to is the due date. Um, it's going to pull up a calendar. The time necessarily isn't really relevant to us, um, but you at least need to pick a date. And for a story like FAFSA, I need to think about when it's due. 
um, and I need to make sure that my deadline is giving people enough notice, enough time for the story to, to help them. Um, I don't want to just inform them about it. I want it to be something that they can take away and learn from it. Um, so you want to pay attention to that due date as well. And that's also going to tell Mr. Stanzek and I and the editors um, when you are really planning on getting that story into us, which is important because then it's another element, another way for us to hold you accountable. Um, the last piece in the card that's, that's important and kind of cool is it has an activity feed very similar to a Facebook feed um, or a Facebook wall. And anybody can comment on this. Um, you'll find me using this a lot if I've got questions or I just want to know where you're at. You can mention a member. So just like Twitter, if I wanted to mention another student, I could say, you know, um, what do you think? of my to-do list. Is there anything I should add? Um, and you'll find me using this a lot, like I said, to message you back and forth. Um, you can add attachments, you can add emojis, that's really not helpful or relevant, but if you want to, you can. Um, and then you can comment on that piece. It's really cool, it also tracks everything you've done. Um, so, you know, this is a huge accountability piece. If you're telling Mr. Stanzik and I, hey, I'm, you know, I'm using Trello and I've done this and I've done that, we can see actually what you've done when, um, as far as moving your cards or editing your cards, um, or if other people have made edits to your cards as well. So, um, this is a really great tool for organizing yourself and having all your stuff in one place. And then like the previous video said, you can then take these and move them along the line um, to show where you're at with deadlines. So that's a pretty basic overview um, of the, the individual cards. You can add cards. Um, you can delete them. Actually, the only way to delete them is to, I believe, archive them. Let's look in the card here. Um, actually, it looks like we can delete, so let me repeat that process. What you do if you click on your card and you click share and more on the right side, you do have the option to hit delete. And it's you cannot undo it. Um, this option to archive is undoable. It will take it off the board so we can't see it anymore. Um, and then it will we could still bring it back if we needed to for some reason. But I'm going to go ahead and delete that one um, as well as my other extra one just to kind of clean up our board. So you can see some of you need to come in and work on stuff. Um, Mr. Stanzak and I will be periodically adding, adding cards for things that we think to, we need to cover. For example, the outcome of the Lighthouse Drive. Um, nobody knows you know, how many items were um, collected and you know where they went or if they were even turned in to the Lighthouse yet. So that would be an easy Q&A with Mrs. Mapes that somebody could take as a, as a extracurricular or clubs feature, um, but also kind of a news, a really short, easy news piece. So if you wanted to pick this up and say, hey, I'll be responsible for that, you could open it up, add your name to it, and then um, color coat. And you could um, go ahead and start filling in the card. And when I close this, that would indicate, okay, you know, Mrs. Mason has picked up this piece and I can see that she's currently working on it. She set a deadline. So um, those are some of the things we would like to see you guys doing. If, if there's something that's coming up that you maybe can't cover but you think we should, feel free to add a blank card for it that somebody else can pick up and use.